Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Patricia Ocampo, Chair of the Board of the Trustees of United Way Greater Toronto. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Wendat, Anishinaabe, and Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. The territory was the subject of an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, Peel Region, Toronto, and York Region are still the home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to work in this territory. Thank you to all who've joined us today. I will chair the business portion of today's program. Today's annual and special meeting of the members will take place in a virtual only format. Prior to the meeting, members were encouraged to submit a proxy form, and we thank all those members who have submitted a proxy. You need not participate in our online voting system today. For those members who've not submitted a proxy, you will be voting through our online system. If you've not already logged in to eBallot, it is a good time to log in now and ensure that everything is working appropriately. We're going to conduct a test vote now and ask members who've not already submitted proxies to vote on the following test question. What do you love most, sunrises or sunsets? After you've logged in, please click the refresh button on your e-ballot browser window and you will see the question and be able to cast your vote. If you experience any difficulty, please email or call us at the contact information posted in the chat. Staff are standing by to assist. And you will have 60 seconds to put in your vote and I'll give you the results in just a moment. Board on this morning, but first I would like to ask Jane Wedlock, who will be assisting with the voting today, to announce the results of the test vote. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm delighted to welcome all members to our 67th 2023 annual and special meeting of the members. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to all of our guests joining us today. We have some past board and campaign cabinet chairs and some elected officials here with us today, and we're so pleased that you could join us. Welcome, everyone. We're also joined this morning by our solicitors, Dentons. For 67 years, Dentons has been providing us with outstanding and unwavering pro bono legal services for which we are immensely grateful. We would like to thank Mark Mahoney, Blair McCready, Alexander Eckler, Pamela Shin, and Tulu Harsa for having provided exceptional advice throughout the years. Thank you to Tulu Harsa for attending today to assist with the meeting and special thanks to Blair McCready for his many years of leadership 
and unwavering support to United Way Greater Toronto. Thank you all. Let us now turn to the business portion of today's meeting. In order to make this process smoother, certain trustees of United Way have already identified to me the motions they will second. Then we will open the floor to voting members for questions and discussion prior to the vote being called. Any members who wish to ask a question or comment may do, may do so using the uh, chat feature. I appoint Anita Stalinga as secretary of the meeting. I appoint Jane Wedlock to act as scrutineer at this meeting and would like to thank her for volunteering with us once again this year. The meeting is now called to order. The scrutineer reports that a quorum of members is present. In addition to the voting members here today, we have received signed proxies from 131 members. The secretary has furnished me with proof of the notice calling this meeting, which I direct to be annexed to the minutes of this meeting. Does anyone wish to have the notice read? Please type yes in the chat box if you would like the notice to be read. Seeing no requests, I hereby dispense with the reading of the notice. The minutes from the 2022 annual general meeting were distributed to members on June 5th. Is there any discussion of the minutes? Seeing no discussion, I declare that the minutes from the 2022 annual general meeting are hereby adopted. Yes. Thank you, Anita. Okay, I will continue then with, um, with the meeting. Uh, so this is my final annual general meeting as chair of the board of trustees. So it should come as no surprise that I'd like to begin on a note of heartfelt thanks to our members and donors, agency leadership and staff, and partners in government, business and labor, to our tremendous fundraising team led by Campaign Cabinet Chair Daryl White and Major Individual Giving Cabinet Chair Paul Bradley, to my fellow board and committee members, and to our CEO and President Daniele Zanotti, members of the senior executive team, and the dedicated staff at United Way. Thank you all for your unwavering commitment to our shared mission. In my time at United Way, 
I've learned what we are capable of when we bring all our efforts together in service to our community. Let's turn our attention to this past year, and it has been a year not for the faint of heart. Hopes were high that the lessons of the pandemic would result in recognition of growing inequality rooted in systemic barriers and discrimination, and the collective will and action to turn that tide. What we saw was sustained urgent need and multiple crises in affordability, housing, and mental health. And the continuing toll on communities across our region manifested in the hunger and homelessness that has become more commonplace on our streets. This deepened our efforts to meet those urgent needs and our conviction that poverty must be tackled through local solutions that drive structural change. I am especially proud of the advances made on our reconciliation and equity plan goals of becoming an equitable organization, fundraiser, and funder, supporting more equitable outcomes in the community. Change indeed starts here. And with the 5030 Challenge, which is an initiative to challenge Canadian organizations to increase the representation and inclusion of diverse groups in workplaces, United Way continues to surpass the challenge in board representation and are making headway with funding approaches resulting in more than 25% of all funded agencies being led by, focused on, and serving structurally disadvantaged groups. This past year, we leaned into the neighborhood work that has defined us, because now, as our region undergoes rapid growth, we must ensure that development and revitalization strengthen and protect neighborhoods, rather than reinforce inequalities. It is our ultimate destination to support the creation of inclusive communities where people enjoy the basic building blocks of a good life. As part of the annual report, we paid a visit to several of the neighborhoods we're working in, and it is my pleasure to present the first video. Indus Community Services uh, in this form and its previous have been here for over 38 years and we've been partnered with the United Way for most of that. Um, that partnership has meant an opportunity to support each other, an opportunity to be able to translate needs in the community into action and then of course into service and then hopefully resolution. How is Cooksville changing? One of our key programs here is settlement support and services around newcomers. So we've seen wave after wave after wave of different newcomers come through. The neighborhood is changing. There's a great deal of construction and because the LRT uh, contract is also for uh, construction and operation. So you're looking at not just the opportunity to maybe kickstart a career, you're actually looking at potentially a long-term career. So the Peel Community Benefits Network that Indus is proud to be a key partner in is an opportunity to see if we can leverage work that we've already begun with local unions, with mobile links, the employer, as well as others to see what we can do to bring new people to the trades, much needed people to the trades, youth looking for opportunities that are outside of, uh, if you will, old expectations around what a career would look like, but also newcomers, women, uh, the differently abled and how they could access good long-term paying jobs where they're able to help contribute to their, directly to this community. Indus is really happy to be an anchor agency. It's allowed us to step more strongly into the area of advocacy and community development. Health equity really became magnified during the uh, pandemic. What did you learn uh, in that journey to address health equity? With such a multicultural community, what we saw during COVID was uh, a disproportionate impact on certain communities when it came to caseload. Mm -hmm. So with that race-based data, with that evidence, we were able to then um, advocate uh, on behalf of creating uh, what became the high priority community strategy. And in this, along with Roots and then PCHS and, and the total of six agencies working in Peel, were able to, uh, using United Way 
original impetus and ideas for how we could move forward, create a community health ambassador framework. That, that meant that we were able to hire from particular communities, people who would be trusted and connected to those communities, train them, educate them, prepare them, protect them, and put them back out in the community with accurate information, which is what gave rise to the upnahealth.org website. Together, the, the, the website, the agencies, the community health ambassadors were able to speak to the people of the neighborhood surrounding us and convince them of the importance of this health or that health activity and, and how that could promote a better life for themselves and their families, and it worked. Mm. None of that could have happened if it wasn't for the flexibility and strength of, of, of their relationship with the United Way of Greater Toronto. Key case in point is as the pandemic hit, the United Way of GT was the first to step up to, to uh, us as a funder and other agencies and say, you know what, spend what you need to spend, do what you need to do. I get what your budget lines were supposed to be for, but we trust you to know what the community needs best. And that was an amazing shot in the arm in a time when we were all going through something we had yeah. no idea what we were about to go through. And I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, United Way. Yeah. So wonderful to hear about all of that work from Indus Community Services, Gupreet Malhotra and United Way's Adoma Patterson. Now let me take you deeper into that work, unpacking tools for change that we've used to take aim at local challenges. A comprehensive and strategic approach to investments has been our hallmark, enabling us to meet the greatest needs, respond to changes, and building lasting solutions. This past year, our investments included renewal of our five-year anchor funding to more than 60 foundational partners a centerpiece of strength and stability for the sector. Administration of almost $6 million in federal reaching home dollars in York Region, adding supportive units to local affordable housing stock. And 19 partnerships and system grants to support coordinated sector responses on a host of issues, including refugee settlement and availability of mental health resources. Silo busting through local coordination is part of United Way's DNA and was at the core of collaborative work for maximum impact. 15 active cluster tables continued to bring government and community together to strengthen service delivery and develop system solutions. From volunteer tax programs for seniors in North Scarborough to homelessness supports in South Etobicoke. Focus Toronto, an initiative of United Way, the City of Toronto, and Toronto Police Service marked 10 years of supporting individuals and communities in avoiding and minimizing crises. And Peel Newcomer Strategy Group's latest report, Newcomer Mental Health and Wellness Through a Settlement Sector Lens, brought forward important recommendations. More than a decade ago, we saw the need to champion access to public spaces and essential community services. We established and continued to fund eight community hubs. We've now added to that legacy with the Bridletown Neighborhood Center, a partnership with Scarborough Hospital and the YWCA of, uh, YMCA of Greater Toronto, breaking ground this week. Regent Park's Unique Social Impact Investment Fund, rooted in place-based work and participatory grant making, has directed almost $1 million to grassroots initiatives and collaborative agencies projects since 2019. Last year, youth projects such as a soccer league, mentorship and leadership programs reach hundreds of youth and their families. One of our most ambitious projects, the Inclusive Local Economic Opportunity Initiative in the Golden Mile, which brings corporate, community, labor, and government together on the vanguard of revitalization that keeps community interests at the center, was recognized as an example of innovative, transformative, and sustainable development by the World Urban Pavilion. Our commitment to driving long-term systemic change through policy starts with a robust base of evidence. 
Last year, we added the Building Inclusive Communities Report, presenting nine tried and true program and policy interventions. In an election year, we work to bring priorities for socially and economically inclusive communities to the public agenda through five policy roundtables with 500 nonprofit leaders and 300 organizations to develop a shared agenda for change in advance of the provincial election and a mayoral by-election debate in partnership with the Toronto Star and Toronto Metropolitan University's Democratic Engagement Exchange. All of that in just this past year, all made possible because of your support and engagement. A $110 million campaign achievement fueled by 2,200 dedicated volunteers from over 950 workplaces, labor partners, and over 85,000 generous donors, including true United Way champions like Don Johnson. Work that will continue, that must continue, as we keep up our efforts to strengthen neighborhoods so that everyone can enjoy financial and housing stability, a network of community services close to home, and opportunities to connect with others to shape those neighborhoods for a more prosperous future. Thank you. Now I invite Bruce McQuaig to provide an update on behalf of the Finance, Audit and Risk Committee. Thank you, Pat. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. And it's my pleasure to present the financial results for the year ended March 31st, 2023, and discuss the financial health of our organization. Let me begin by extending my sincere thanks and appreciation to the seven members of the Finance, Audit, and Risk Committee. The committee oversees the audit and financial controls, budget and financial management, investment management, risk management, and digital transformation work plan on behalf of the Board of Trustees. It was another extraordinary year for United Way and the communities we serve with the United Way adapting to the new normal as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic environment and the financial uncertainties, including the fears of a recession. We remain committed to our business priorities and delivered on all of the financial commitments made to community investments, community services, and program support, working together with our network of agencies and community partners for solutions to meet existing, urgent, and emerging community needs. The United Way Greater Toronto audited financial statements consolidate the financial results of the United Way's operations, capital expenditures, and the Tomorrow Fund. They are prepared in accordance with the Canadian accounting standards for not-for-profit organizations and are also aligned to United Way Centrate Canada's transparency, accountability, and financial reporting standards. As the United Way adapted to the declaration of COVID-19 as a pandemic by the World Health Organization in March of 2020 and pivoted to a digital office and remote workforce, KPMG has issued an unqualified financial report. And similar to previous years, KPMG concurred with management that the United Way Greater Toronto met the requirements of being a going concern for this coming fiscal year, 2023-24. I would like to report that the auditors and members of the committee are satisfied with the strength and the systems of administrative and financial management controls in place at the United Way. We have remained committed to investments in the community and have confirmed a minimum commitment of at least $66.9 million to our network of agencies and community partners for fiscal year 2023-24, which included five-year and three-year investments of stable and flexible funding to anchor agencies and community programs. Prudent financial management remains a top priority. Operating and financial reserves are at a healthy level with our financial reserves in the range of 8.6 months. Here are some highlights from this past fiscal year. First, 
overall revenue was $137.8 million in fiscal year 22-23 versus the prior year of $143.2 million. Fiscal year 22-23 experienced a decrease in COVID-19 pandemic and emergency revenue from government and a decrease in government grants and disbursements and donor-related designations. Second, community investments of $115.2 million were made through the Community Services Sector Strategy to poverty-fighting anchor agencies and community program grants of $66.9 million. A unique to United Way approach is to provide stability and flexibility to the network of agencies that support people who are at risk or falling into poverty. This compares to $123.3 million in the previous year due to a decrease in COVID-19 emergency funding, a decrease in donor-directed designations, and a decrease in government-funded emergency programs associated with COVID-19. Third, there was an operating surplus of $3.5 million. This is the third consecutive year of achieving at least a balanced budget. The operating surplus was derived from cost savings in operations and $3 million from investment activities related to the management of the reserves and the tomorrow fund. Finally, our fundraising cost revenue ratio continues to remain low by industry standards at 15.1%. Management continues to maintain a strong focus on operational efficiency and the diligence is reflected in this ratio. Prudent financial management at the United Way of Greater Toronto remains a priority with its reserves being maintained at healthy levels and sufficient to backstop the three-year and five-year financial commitments that the United Way has made to its network of agencies and the ongoing sustainability of its operations when looking forward. Deemed as a going concern for the year ahead, the levels of the reserve are financial indicators of the health and sustainability for the United Way, especially with the financial uncertainties of the macroeconomic environment, including the COVID-19 pandemic environment, inflation, market volatility, and fears of recession. I would now like to move the following resolution. Be it resolved that KPMG LLP is hereby appointed auditor of the corporation to hold office until the next annual meeting of members at such remuneration as may be fixed by the directors, and the directors are hereby authorized to fix such remuneration. Isla McGlynn has second in the motion. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, voting members are now invited to cast their vote. Please click the refresh button on your e-ballot browser window. You will see the motion for you to vote on. You have one minute to submit your vote, and then Jane Wedlock will report on the results.
Thank you, Jane. I declare the resolution carried. Back to you, Pat. Bruce, thank you for your dedication in leading our Finance Audit and Risk Committee this year and overseeing our finances. Next, I would like to ask the members to confirm the amendments to the United Way Greater Toronto bylaws. In the meeting materials for members, there is a summary of the amendments and the rationale for the changes. Also included is a copy of the amendment amended and restated bylaw number one with track changes. The board approved these amendments on March 31st, 2023, and members are being asked to confirm them now. Before we vote on this, let me ask if there are any questions about the bylaw amendment. Seeing none, I move that be it resolved that the amended and restated bylaw number one, being a general bylaw of United Way Greater Toronto in the form approved by the Board of Trustees on March 31st, 2023, is hereby confirmed without variation or amendment, and that any officer or director of United Way Greater Toronto is hereby authorized and directed to do and perform all acts and things, including without limitation, the execution of documents necessary or desirable to give effect to the foregoing. Len Carby has sec seconded the motion. Voting members are invited to cast your vote. Please click the refresh button on your e-ballot browser window where you'll see the motion for you to vote on and you have one minute to submit your vote and Jane will report the results. Thank you, Jane. I declared the resolution carried. Next, I would like to ask the members to confirm the amendments to the United Way Greater Toronto Articles. In the meeting materials for members, there is a summary of the amendments and the rationale for the changes. The board approved these amendments on March 31st, 2023, and members are being asked to confirm them now. Before we vote on this, let me ask if there are any questions about the amendments to the articles. Seeing none, I move that. Be it resolved that the articles of amendment in the form presented to the members of the United Way of Greater Toronto and recommended by the Board of Trustees is hereby approved without variation or amendment and that any officer or director of United Way Greater Toronto is hereby authorized and directed to do and perform all acts and things, including without limitation, the execution of documents necessary or desirable to give to the foregoing. Voting members are invited to cast your vote. Please click the refresh button on your e-ballot browser window where you'll see the motion for you to vote on. 
You have one minute to submit your vote and Jane will report on the results. Thank you, Jane. I declare the resolution carried. Next, I would now like to present the report from the Governance and Human Resources Committee. This committee is responsible for ensuring the continued excellence of governance at United Way Greater Toronto in three ways. First, by recruiting and developing stable and effective volunteer leadership to the board and its committees. Second, by shaping the board's governance model to meet the evolving needs of the organization. And third, by ensuring excellence in the management of the organization through reviewing the objectives and performance of the CEO and ensuring the CEO is appropriately supported at an executive level. I chair the committee and the other members are Lisa Gonsalves, Bruce McQuaig, Nancy McConnell, and Isla McGlynn. The Governance and Human Resources Committee has been working this year to meet the governance needs for our organization, and the nominations report has been circulated to members. Now let me introduce to you the nominees for the board. Members will find the full bios for each of the candidates in the nominations report, but I would like to give a few highlights of each person. We are grateful that our trustees have agreed to stand to be re-elected to provide their wisdom and guidance to United Way. I will now introduce them. Betsy Chung is the EVP, Global Chief Marketing Officer of TD Bank Group, where she oversees the articulation of TD's purpose-driven strategy across its global footprint. In this role, Betsy leads a world-class team of marketers who drive growth, activate the brand, and help form deeper connections with customers, colleagues, and communities. Betsy is also a member of the Strategic Development Subcommittee since 2022. Betsy has been a trustee since 2018 and is being reelected for a term of one year ending at the AGM in 2024. Ziad is the Chief Investment Officer at Ontario Teachers Pension Plan and has global experience in both public and private markets. He's been instrumental in leading the investments division to launch, expand, and grow various global investment strategies. Ziad is also a member of United Way's major individual giving cabinet since 2021. Ziad joined our board in 2022 and is being re-elected for a three-year term ending at the AGM in 2026. Isla McGlynn retired from a 33-year banking career and has broad experience across personal, small business, and commercial banking business lines, as well as experience in risk management, human resources, and operations. She is also the chair of Maduro and Curiel's Bank, 
a full service bank based in Curacao with subsidies across the Dutch Caribbean. Isla is a dedicated United Way supporter and volunteer. She was previously active with the United Way Halifax, is a longtime donor and a member of our major individual giving cabinet since 2018. Isla joined our board in 2020 and is being reelected for her second three-year term ending at the AGM in 2026. In addition to Betsy, Ziad, and Isla, we're bringing forward Ram Selvaraja as a new trustee. Ram is the president of the Peel Region Labor Council. Ram Selvaraja is a senior systems analyst with the Ministry of the Solicitor General and has more than 20 years of experience in the Ontario Public Service. He has extensive experience in the labor relations and is a strong advocate for human rights and equity. Rom was elected as president of the Peel Regional Labor Council in 2022. He's nominated for a three-year term ending at the AGM in 2026. This is the slate of board nominees that we ask you to elect. On behalf of the Governance and Human Resources Committee, I will move the motion. Be it resolved that Betsy Chung will be elected to the Board of Trustees of the United Way Greater Toronto for a one-year term ending at the 2024 Annual General Meeting, and be it further resolved that Isla McGlynn be elected to the Board of Trustees of the United Way Greater Toronto for her second three-year term, and Ziad Hindu and Ram Selvarja be elected for a first three-year term ending at the 2026 Annual General Meeting. Mariam Hashmi has seconded the motion. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, voting members are now invited to cast your vote. Please click the refresh button on your e-ballot browser window you will see the motion to vote on, and you'll have one minute to submit your vote, after which Jane will report the results. Thank you, Jane. I declare the resolution carried. Thank you, Betsy, Ziad, and Isla for your continued commitment to the board and to Ram for joining our board to lend your expertise and wisdom. That brings us to the end of the formal business portion of this year's 2023 annual and special meeting of the members. Do any voting members have other business to be proposed? There being no other business raised, I hereby declare that this year's annual and special meeting of the members is hereby terminated. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Daniel Zanotti, President, 
and CEO who for decades has held a steadfast commitment to community and inclusivity and works tirelessly to ensure ongoing positive impacts and change. Over to you, Daniele. We love Pat Ocampo, oh yes we do. I had to do that, my friends. It's been 45 minutes of motions and minutes and scrutineers scrutinizing in subdued voices. Many of you likely napping or multitasking, so I had to sing out, we love Pat Ocampo, oh yes we do. And I had to do that, Pat, because you personally, have been stewarding this United Way as a board member since 2011, chaired our Community Impact Committee from 2017 to 2021, diligently, strategically investing donor dollars and emergency federal COVID funding too, in the best bar none network of agencies and partners in the GTA. And then Pat, elected chair of our board from 2021 to 2023 in most turbulent times. And if that wasn't enough, to be sounding board and mentor to me. I love you, Pat Ocampo. Because in two years of weekly touch bases, you modeled that sometimes saying very little with flat affect says more than rambling, rambling on passionately and endlessly about nothing. Now, I didn't say you succeeded, <laughs> but you tried valiantly. And your inimitable, Pat, less is more, get right to the core, Ocampo Way. You have helped United Way steward, then get stronger after our two mergers. You have helped shape and monitor our five-year now new next roadmap. You led our first foundational reconciliation and equity action plan. You've walked with indigenous elders and leaders as we shaped our indigenous partners council. In fact, we love you so much, Ocampo. We passed a motion in the minutes scrutinized by the scrutineer that you can't leave just yet. <laughs> You've agreed to stay on as past chair and as co-chair of the Indigenous Partners Council for a year. This is why, from all of the United Way family, through me, albeit poorly, we love you, Pat. Oh, <laughs> yes, we do. Now, let's visit our neighborhood work in York Region. Enough time for me to wipe the tears from my eyes. Over to our video. The United Way and the Region of York are committed to ending poverty and meeting the needs of citizens living in York Region. The United Way and the Region have also had a really long, stable, fruitful partnership. Tell me a little bit about that partnership from your perspective. Uh, United Way, for example, sits on our Human Services Planning Board where we look at issues that impact our communities across the region and look for ways to address those issues from a system perspective. One initiative that comes to mind is our point-in-time count that United Way has helped us deliver. Uh, through this count, we gain a better understanding of the number of people experiencing a homelessness over a 24-hour period. And not only do we get an, an understanding of the number uh, of, of, of individuals, we also gain a better understanding of the conditions and the impact being felt by those people experiencing homelessness. And that, in turn, helps inform program design and policy planning. Uh, United Way is also a key partner when we consider policy options and funding approaches when we direct funding to communities. For example, through our Community Investment Fund, we target gaps in community needs and we consult with United Way when we're considering policy options and making uh, funding considerations. During the pandemic, we realized that place truly matters, place matters. 
And we have adopted that insight and understanding in, in developing and implementing some programs and initiatives recently, including our community safety and well-being plan, which is place-based. And this is where we really tap and lean on United Way's experience and success in rolling out place-based work. We have established community action tables, which are um, resident-led, community-based tables to bring partners together and implement local projects. United Way, once again, is at the table with us, uh, providing supports, including something called Quick Action Grants. With Quick Action Grants, what's that, what's that like? Tell us a little bit about the impact of that and, and how it works. We work with these groups to really target mental health, um, however they see makes sense for their community because they're living within it, they know what challenges are happening on the ground, so we work with them to support that. And then, for example, one of our projects, the Super Women Project, they you know, had these older adult women meet every week and through those weekly um, workshops, they actually really formed a deep connection with each other. And so beyond the project, they've really been able to keep up with each other in the community, check in on each other, just make sure, you know, like, although we're isolated, um, sometimes because a lot of them, they're older adults, maybe they're stay at home moms, they still have these connections with each other and they're able to really go out and do other things with each other. We're still able to keep addressing that mental health issue um, even beyond the grant.